This is a Spare Presents coming to you from Las Cruces, New Mexico. I've been uh, reading a lot at uh, the public library recently and we gleaned some material to create an essay entitled uh, The Literature of the 1920s. Literature was to the 1920s what film was for the 1960s. It shattered the boundaries of form and content. It's like uh, Dickens was out and there's a lot of new stuff was happening in literature. The uh, 1920s gave birth to a host of authors and it was fertile ground for seminal works of uh, many of the 20th century's best writers. The culture of early 21st century America I find vapid, inane, and suckled from the open sewer we call a television that runs through everyone's home. The common sensibility has been dumbed down to the lowest level. High tickets for hockey, baseball, wrestling, racing, reality shows where blue-collar schmucks displace TV stars. Who needs an I Love Lucy or Dick Van Dyke, Mary Tyler Moore? Don't need names anymore. Just Put out a cattle call. Publishing is motivated by profit. The volumes people buy are celebrity tell-alls, trash fiction, cookbooks, biographies of famous people, and how-to manuals like web design for the brain dead. The George W. Bush agenda has convinced an unwitting public that bankrupting our country for military buildup and preemptive attacks on other nations that have no weapons of mass destruction and to occupy other countries for many years was all done for our protection. Far from this mental morass, the 1920s provides me with material that I can sink my teeth into. And 1922 in particular was the non-real year of that decade. What follows is a list of titles that appeared in 1922. We'll start with Ulysses by James Joyce, the Irishman in Exile, a uh, massive uh, novel uh, which is brilliant and tedious at, at turns, but has spawned Bloomsday. Uh, one of the main characters, Leopold Bloom, as he walked around Dublin on June 16th. 1904. Over 60 countries around the world now celebrate Bloom's Day where they drink pints of Guinness and read from Ulysses. The influence continues. Uh, the Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Uh, long poem. April is the cruelest month. Is that why they chose April for a National Poetry Month? Uh, the, the, the Wasteland, innovative, modernish to the max. Forget uh, Walt Whitman, he's, he's bringing in languages, European languages, he's bringing in all kinds of stuff into his work. It uh, examines the social turmoil and spiritual loss that occurred after World War I. The uh, group perhaps known as the Lost Generation, as Gertrude Stein uh, referred to particular artists of that time. 
Hemingway types, perhaps, going to bullfights, drinking, fishing, hunting, drinking, reading, fishing, writing, drinking, the lost generation. The Foresight Saga by John Galsworthy, the uh, extensive uh, piece of work containing trilogies and uh, interludes, all published together in 1922, traces the one family, three generations, kind of through a whole two decades of this one family, Babbitt by Sinclair Lewis. This Main Street author gave us a uh, new word in the English language. Babbitt is someone who conforms unthinkingly to prevailing middle class standards. <laughs>